Hello everyone. In our last video, we have covered the basics of transformers, how they work, and some simple calculations under ideal conditions. Today, we're going to dive deeper into the equivalent circuit of a transformer, exploring the calculations for losses and efficiency of a transformer. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any update. Let's begin by sketching an equivalent circuit for a transformer. First, let's talk about R1 and R2. These represent the winding resistance losses. Every wire has some inherent resistance, which leads to energy loss through heat when current flows. Next, we have X1 and X2, which indicate magnetic flux leakage. This leakage happens because not all the magnetic flux from the primary winding is contained within the iron core. Instead, some of the flux is passing through the surrounding air, leading to minor losses. Next, let's look at the no-load losses, represented by the no-load resistance, R0, and the no-load reactance, X0. These losses remain constant, regardless of whether a load is connected to the transformer. A small amount of current, called the no-load current, is required to keep the transformer's core energized. This no-load current is the vector sum of the working component, IW, and the magnetizing component, IB. R0 represents the iron core loss. This includes hysteresis loss, which is caused by the constant magnetization and demagnetization of the iron core, and eddy current loss, which occurs due to induced currents flowing in the core. X0, connected in parallel, represents the losses due to the magnetizing current needed to establish the magnetic flux in the core. Under no-load conditions, the primary current, I1, is equal to the no-load current, I0. Induced electromotive forces, denoted as E1 in the primary coil and E2 in the secondary coil, are generated. The secondary current, I2, is zero because the circuit is incomplete or open. However, as we explained in our previous video, the primary current is proportional to the secondary current. This means that if a load is connected to the secondary side and secondary current flows, the primary current will increase proportionally. The increase in primary current can be calculated using reflected secondary current, I2 prime, given by the formula K times I2. Here K is the ratio of the number of turns in the secondary coil to the number of turns in the primary coil. To accurately calculate the current flow, voltage, and losses, the components from the secondary circuit can be reflected to the primary circuit. For example, the reflected resistance, R2 prime, and reactance, X2 prime, and reflected load impedance, ZL prime, are calculated by dividing R2, X2, and ZL with K squared. Similarly, the reflected voltage, VL prime, is obtained by dividing load voltage, VL, with K. Let's try a sample calculation to better understand the transformer equivalent circuit. Consider a 16 kVA, 50 Hz, single phase distribution transformer that steps down the voltage from 6350 volts to 250 volts with percentage impedance of 3.85% and other parameters provided. Our goal is to calculate the transformer's input power, output power, power loss, and efficiency. To start, we need to reflect the secondary circuit components to the primary circuit. This involves calculating the R2 prime, X2 prime, and ZL prime. Subsequently, we can calculate the impedance Z0 of R0 parallel to X0. Once we've done this, we can find the equivalent impedance of the series parallel circuit. Assuming the input voltage is exactly 6351 volts, we can use Ohm's law to calculate the primary current. I1. The resulting primary current is 2.24 amps, with a phase angle of 45.44 degrees lagging. Next, using the current divider rule, we can calculate the no-load current I0. We also get the reflected secondary current I2 prime. Using the current divider rule again, we can further decompose I0 into the IW and IB. After that, using Ohm's law, we can calculate the reflected load voltage, VL prime, obtaining 6,171.42 volts, with a phase angle of minus 1.06 degrees. We can then find the actual load voltage, VL, by multiplying VL prime with the K factor. Likewise, we can determine the secondary current, I2, 
by dividing I2 prime with the K factor. Now that we have all the necessary voltage and current values, let's calculate the input power, output power, and power loss. Using the formula for power, which is voltage times current, times the cosine of the phase angle difference between voltage and current, we find the following. The input power calculated from the source voltage in I1 is 9.98 kilowatts. The output power calculated from VL and I2 is 9.82 kilowatts. Subtracting the output power from the input power, we get the power loss, which is 0.16 kilowatts. To validate this loss value, we can find the total of individual winding losses and core losses using the I squared R formula, ensuring it matches our calculated power loss. In this case, the summation of individual losses is also 0.16 kilowatts, confirming our calculations. Finally, we can calculate the efficiency by calculating the ratio of output power to input power. With these values, the efficiency of this transformer is approximately 98.4%. In conclusion, we can see that practical transformers are not ideal. It is important to note that different manufacturers may use varying designs, leading to variations in losses and efficiency. Finally, let's discuss two essential tests that provide critical data for transformers, the open circuit test and the short circuit test. First, Let's discuss the open circuit test. The open circuit test determines the no-load losses, which is the core losses, no-load currents, core loss components are not, and magnetizing components, x not of the transformer. In this test, a voltmeter, wattmeter, and ammeter are connected to the low voltage side of the transformer. By applying voltage at the rated frequency to the LV side and keeping the high voltage side open, we can measure the input power with the wattmeter which approximates the core losses. The no-load current is indicated by the ammeter. After that, we can use specific formulas to estimate the R0 and X0. Next, let's look into the short circuit test. A short circuit test is performed to determine the equivalent winding resistance, equivalent leakage reactance, copper loss, and the percentage impedance of the transformer. For this test, a variable voltage source is connected to the HV side, and the LV side is short-circuited. Now we gradually increase the supply voltage from zero until the transformer reaches its rated current. The voltage required to reach this current can use to calculate the percentage impedance, which is crucial for fault analysis. The wattmeter reading during this test corresponds to the copper loss. Subsequently, we can approximate the equivalent winding resistance and leakage reactants using the appropriate formulas. After performing the open circuit and short circuit test, we can now estimate the transformer's efficiency based on the copper loss and core loss identified from both tests. In summary, performing transformer tests to obtain these critical values gives us a thorough understanding of the transformer's performance and ensures its reliability. That's it for today's video. We hope you now have a clearer understanding of the equivalent circuit of a transformer and feel more confident in performing the basic calculations. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and share it with others. Thank you for watching.